Today we're going to be looking at mixing WebXR and Gaussian splats. Uh, both of these are really amazing technologies that have come out recently, and so it only makes sense to combine the two. Gaussian splats are both efficient to render and also have a lot of photorealism to them. You need things to run fast because AR has its own overhead. So to start off with, we need to decide how we are going to render these Gaussian splats. And there are a few different libraries. We're going to stick to JavaScript so that we can easily convert it into WebXR. So within JavaScript, there are even four or five different libraries to use. <laughs> All of them have been updated super recently. Uh, this is a very lively field, so I don't want to give any sort of advice on which one to use yet because they are all still actively in development, which means next week all the advice I give might end up being wrong. The one that we're going to be sticking to for this project is gsplats.js, um, and that is the one that at the time that I was building this out was the quickest. Uh, it did have some disadvantages. It had very little tooling. So the core idea of connecting these two is you just basically pick the renderer up and then you attach the WebXR camera to the camera that is rendering the Gaussian splat. And then as you move the WebXR camera around it, it updates the Gaussian splat camera. And then you're basically just rendering that on top of the WebXR scene. And that that's basically the key idea here is that we're basically just copying over the information from the camera. Um, And it works pretty well. It's There's like some disadvantages to doing the things this way. So like uh, if your camera intrinsics don't match up, then you'll end up with kind of a mismatch. Uh, so for the most part, I eyeball the focal length. That's not ideally how you do things, um, but it seemed to work out pretty well. So some of the modifications to the code that I needed to make uh, were I needed to make the background transparent. Um, I also needed to change the focal length. I just divided it by four and it seemed to work all right. Um, and then you also need to make sure that the scaling is correct. So I was finding a lot of these scenes are scaled about five to one. So if you increase them by about five, um, that ends up being about the realism scale. It's not a lot of code editing that I had to make. Um, for the most part, like some of this is just boilerplate code. So if it's like 100 lines, like 80, 90 lines are boilerplate. <laughs> and it does work with Dream Gaussian, but there are some kind of like, like it's not the highest quality. I think it's like a work in progress. And I think you can kind of start to see what might be possible, like even a few months from now. Um, I'm so so impressed that we've already gotten to the point where like differentiable rendering is very easy to put into WebXR. Um, and it was like a super like this technology was developed over the summer. Like it's these things are moving so quickly. <laughs> so I also needed to make a scaling function because a lot of the images were smaller than I would like them to be. So basically all that was is that we had to push all of the points out. Um, and then we also had to scale them up. So the first time around, I only ended up pushing them all out. And that just ends up making a really like empty scene. <laughs> um, so you need to have both of those in conjunction. Yeah, I think there's still quite a bit of work to be done, but I think the first results are exciting enough for me that I, I'm, yeah, I think this is a, the right direction. So it might look like the tracking isn't working, but that actually is more of an issue with FES. So the Gaussian splatter is only being rendered every 20 frames per second. Like it's between 15 and 20 frames per second. Um, and so that leads to the, these lagging issues. And so it's not actually the tracking that's messing up. It's just like, we need to be a little bit faster with our render times. And that's something that hopefully will just come in time. So hopefully as we just make small optimizations, um, that'll work out. You can also aim for a smaller scene, although, I think that it still has some issues like 20 seems to be around the best case I was getting <laughs> so there definitely is some sort of rendering issue between the Ga the dream Gaussian repo and this one so this library was actually put together by a YouTuber it goes by individual Kex and it also is a wrapper around this other repo that was put together by antimatter 15 so I think those are two people that I just thank you so much for the work that you've done it's amazing um, I'll make the fork available. This is going to be a little bit challenging for people who haven't done much with code uh, because it's a little bit low level and that there's some like GPU stuff in there and whatnot. But uh, for the most part, I think this is a really exciting time. And I think that there's going to be some really cool things coming out in the next few months. So I am pretty stoked about that. I'm pretty sure you can get this working with VR pretty rapidly too. Yeah, my suggestion is once again, looking at the Gaussian Splats 3D uh, library, that will probably be a much better source for that um yeah